Hey guys, Eric in the alley again. Um, today I just got in, it's uh, Tyler's, it's actually the people I rent the garage off of. Um, you got a Honda Elantra, you got the engine light on. The, the, I think he said it was a uh, rear O2 is what it was scanned with before. And he tried the, the additive that you put in to clean out the catalytic converter. Uh, I guess something you've seen on YouTube that, you know, Scotty Kilmer has that put the lacquer thinner in there, but sometimes O2 sensors just go bad. What we're going to do first is plug it in. Um, I probably do have for the modus. I probably do have the key for this car. I believe it's under its years, but I'm going to just use the Autel, the MP808. It's been reliable and maybe a little bit slow, but pretty reliable. We're going to see what the light's on for and, you know, see if we could just use a scanner or we're going to need the scope, but you know, we're going to find out. All right. I thought I read the VIN. You said, okay. Let her load up the Honda. It would be Honda USA. 2007 Elantra 2.0. Everything looks clean. I checked the oil. Checked there. I just did a visual inspection underneath the hood. It's you know, everything looks good, like it was upkept anyway. So that's that's the main thing. Got about a uh, hundred fifty thousand on it, and we have four faults in the engine. One in the ABS. That light is on. See, some of the newer scanners, they scan a lot quicker, but this still, it doesn't do the bus communication, but it, it does do, you know, other modules and just the engine. And I mentioned before in one of my videos, this is about the, the cheapest bi-directional scanner I could get at the time. Now there's uh, other options out there. Okay. We do have the heated oxygen sensor, the heater control circuit, bank one sensor two, the catalyst system efficiency below the threshold. And what that have to do with the O2? EVAP system leakage detected, vehicle speed sensor, circuit range performance. Hmm. Well, these two are what we're looking for right now. The EVAP is interesting, but that's going to be separate from the catalyst and the O2. These two are definitely going to be related. The EVAP and the speed sensor, that they're going to be different, different, um, I don't know what you call them, things to look at. But the two right now, we're going for the heated oxygen sensor and the catalyst efficiency so that's going to require going to live data i'm going to start up we're going to just see what that rear o2 looks like and this would be odd here the bank one sensor one the heater 70 milliseconds the heating time for bank two is 120 milliseconds that must be over the threshold or it's setting the heater code that's staying the constant. Okay, bank one sensor two. It's the voltage. That's what we're going to go after. Staying the point four. One sensor one. Okay, he's not swinging. Fuel trims don't look bad, not at idle anyway. Camshaft position. Mm 
Now Miss Fire's on the counter. Okay, so what we're gonna do Enough sensor. Yeah, we have to get out of the metric system for a minute. It's one volt. Pounds an hour. No. I can tell you the truth, guys. Whenever I see something like that that's in pounds per hour, what I want to do is go to global where it'll let me control these a little bit more more like we're used to just the way that the system interprets the data get out of there for a minute out of there, yes I'm gonna go OBD this is sometimes the way you get more like what you're used to seeing on the older ones or like a standard uh, data pids that you could actually see some codes found. Okay, we could read the codes there, but we're going to go into right now a lot of data. Letting that converter get hot running, I mean, it's, uh, that's how we're going to want to test their hot. Okay, now we got more of a... Standard, uh, PIDs. We're still in pounds per second here, which is... What I was hoping would, would have changed. Well, no, now we're back to the grams a second, so... A little bit high, but I wouldn't... Wouldn't be offset about that. Now this is bank one sensor two. That's the arc. This would be bank one sensor one. Let me see. Bank one sensor two. So that's the one we're looking at. That's the one we wanted. It's swinging pretty good, we're going to see, but it's not going down. We're staying around 0.7. So what I'm going to do is get inside it and just rev it a little bit, flutter it, see if we can make it go lean. Alright guys, it looks like SO2 is kind of working the way it should, but it's, it's just the catalytic converter isn't holding the oxygen. Because whenever you rub it, it's responding like an upstream. That line should be a lot fatter. If we look at our voltage... It's dropping down to 0.075, and at the rich after a snap, it's not quite going up 0.95. I mean, but it's just swinging too much. It's following the upstream, I'm sure. Let's uh. Off fuel. Let's see if we could get the upstream on there too. Just a short term. Short term. I mean, okay. There's bank one sensor one. This is what we want.
Okay, if we take this, this bed, this bed. Well, I'm pretty sure there's a way to watch them both full screen that it escapes me right now. That's definitely not it. But we could see them both anyways. The rear one's going lean on a D-cell. Then it's following Rich. I think the cat shot guys, I mean it's pretty steady there. Don't like that. This would be, let me make sure, the top one should be banked too, but you see it cuts off some of the wording. But if you hit the I button, it tells you the whole... Okay, sensor 2 is on top. I just wanted to make sure it didn't rearrange them whenever I... This is sensor 2. This is the upstream sensor. Get lean and rich. Then the cat goes back to flat line at around 0.8 volts. And the, ox, the upstream stand at like point or 1.96, almost two volts. Both responding, but not really swinging. Now I just want to double check. I'm going to see if there's a vacuum hose I could, can take off and see if the downstream goes lean. But it seems like it's. Reporting good. It's just uh, it's the heater circuit for the rear of the two Okay guys the only vacuum line I could find with easy access is back there at the brake booster So I got the scanner out here and what we're going to do is I'm going to just take off that brake hose with the needle nose And we're going to see how the rear of the two responds Going straight lane. So move the vacuum back. Starts reading the normal again. Take the vac make a vacuum leak. She goes lane. So What does that tell us? Tells us the sensor is working, but the heater isn't. Or at least so far, we haven't checked the wiring, but... Well, the sensor replacing the O2 is definitely not going to stop the 420. If the actual rear O2 is reading great, uh, the 420 code's going to, I think, come back. I'm going to talk to him, see what he wants to do, but it's definitely going to... You know, with the heater circuit, we're going to have to replace that. But, you know, I was kind of hoping it was a rear O2. A lot of times you'll get a false 420 if the O2 sensor is reading wrong. But causing that vacuum leak and seeing it go lean like that, that's, you know, that, that doesn't look good for the catalytic converter. All right, guys, I took out the rear O2 sensor. What I'm going to do now is just run the camera up in it and just see if I could take a look at both ends, uh, the upstream and the uh, downstream cat. There's two cats on it.
All right, guys, I'll share that footage of the cats with you. Now I'm just thumbing out the heater circuit. This would be the new O2. This is a Bosch Premium O2 sensor, 8.7 ohms on uh, two white wires. That would be the heater positive and the heater negative. So you're getting 8.8 .8 ohms on that one. That's the new sensor. Okay, and there's the same two wires on the old sensor, and we're getting 13.6 ohms. So that's a difference about 5 ohms, so yeah, that'll definitely throw a heater code. Just takes it longer to heat up the more resistance there is. Now we're going to check the powers in the grounds and then put the new O2 in it. All right, guys, I used the Load Pro to check the power in the ground going to the O2 sensor. Uh, a lot of people don't like these. They say it's not enough of a load, but what you're doing is you're loading the set circuit and checking for the voltage drop. And it, it's pretty fast. It's pretty efficient. What I found is I, I've learned to trust that it's, it's enough. It's enough of a load to tell you which direction to go. If you're getting a good positive result, keep going. If, if it's dropping it and it seems like it's dropping it a lot, then you might want to get out of light. Then you might want to get out of scope. But just for checking the power in the ground, the adapters you could put on the end of these, I mean, it's a good fast tool. It checks the circuit real quick for you. So whatever way you feel about them, that's what I used. I, I have plenty of test lights. I have plenty of uh, headlight bulbs. I have plenty of turn signal bulbs rigged up. But sometimes you just can't beat this if you already have a voltmeter out. All right, guys, I got the speed sensor out. This is a good time before you just put another speed sensor in it. Make sure, turn the rotor or the wheel. Let me put this up so you can, I'll get a look at it. And just make sure all the cone ring or uh, whatever they're using for a trigger for the speed sensor to pick up on. You just want to make sure it's all there. Because sometimes these things are missing the teeth. You get a code. It's kind of hard to get the camera where I want it. There you can kind of see. You're going to turn the wheel. And just make sure all the teeth are there. And you don't see nothing crazy. Sometimes you see grease in there, dirt. And if it gets in between them. In between the teeth there. It'll make a make it pick up one long signal instead of all these individual marks. All right, I'm going to put that on and uh, I thinking maybe even plugging it in. I plugged in a couple of these wheel cylinders or uh, wheel speed sensors before just uh, get an image on to make sure they're putting out. It's kind of cool, you know, seeing a speed sensor on the scope and I, I've used uh, eight scope before and got a pretty good image. So I'm probably going to do the same thing with this one. Just a quick tip, this is for these are for plumbing. I use these on battery terminals, anything like this, speed sensors. Just get it down in the hole a little bit, you know, clean all that, all the rough edges, the rust, everything. And what I usually do is I put a little bit of dielectric grease. I don't like putting it on the sensor, but I'll just put some on my pinky and smear it around here. Just to get, just make sure the sensor goes in good and it's going to come out good again if he ever needs another one in the future. But, you know, every time you replace a sensor, don't just slap it in there. Make sure you're giving it a good mating surface, a little bit of lubrication, uh, push it in there because you don't want to break a new sensor putting it in. I mean, that, that, that's horrible. But you want to leave everything like you're going to be the next guy working on it. That's what I always think. Is if you keep working on the same car, you know, eventually you're going to get around to something that you put anti-seize on, something that you cleaned up, and you, you're just going to be thankful that you did. All right, guys, I did uh, put the plug the speed sensor in, checked it out on scope. I didn't get that good of a pattern, but I did get... Uh, some kind of signal. It didn't seem to increase with the speed of the tire, but it, it's two tires are off the ground, two two aren't spinning, so I'm not very sure that test was valid at all. But 
for the evap leakage, uh, we don't have a light back on yet, but the scanner does have a uh, test service to perform the function check of the evap system and leakage check. Vehicle stop, fuel mount 15-85%, no DDCs, idle status, engine warm up above 80, check. Okay, please cycle the key off for a minimum of five minutes before to rechine this leakage test. But we don't have to shut her off. I don't know why we, we have to be at idle. Okay. It's had a large leak, so it should be should be able to self-check itself, or you should be able to find it, you know, fairly easy. Okay, test completed, no leakage. You could hear the vent valve and the purge valve clicking while it was doing that, but that's pretty good because it was a large leak code, and I don't know who unplugged what before, so maybe there was something that picked up. I'm not sure. I didn't see if that one was illuminating the lighter, if it was just CO2. Oh, it's does have an ignition test. Oh, don't need to do that. What I want to go to is live data. I want to see if that rear O2 looks any better. It's probably not going to because the it was just a heater circuit. Okay, we're down uh 60 milliseconds. It's still slower heating. Well, bank one sensor one is 60. Now oxygen sensor heating time bank one sensor two. That's the one we just replaced. 20 milliseconds. So you see, before we were 100 something. I'm gonna have to go back and uh, review the data. But the number two was heating up a lot slower than number one. Now number two's the new one's heating up very fast. So happy with that. The oxygen center sensor voltage is what I want to see if it made any oh well, now we have a swing to it at any rate scales are a little bit off but but it is swinging and it's a rear O2 sensor so see it's swinging just like it's a front one So pretty sure the PO420 is going to come back, but at least the heater code's fixed. The engine light's off, ABS light's off. So he got a couple months left on his inspection. Until then, you know, run it. There's no big plugage of the catalytic converters. So run it till you can't. Morning, guys. Having some coffee this morning in the alley. Uh, I came up here to... I downloaded... Uh, on the camera the images I took of the catalytic converter yesterday but I just wanted to add them so you could see uh, how a camera is a you know very important part of diagnostics but what I want to show you is the codes I had and the reason I went the way I did go on that car because it's a it's I, I diss this autel a lot and I really shouldn't because that was the only we talk about scopes a lot, you know, it's, uh, we talk about test lights a lot. We have a lot of different tools that are disposable, especially oscilloscopes. That's what we, that's where what we're all interested in. It's all seems more enjoyable or the, you know, whatever your preference is. It's a, uh, you know, to me, it's more enjo enjoyable than doing just the regular nuts and bolts. So um, I just wanted to show you a quick of what I used and why why I used that particular tools um, is the camera. 
So you're going to see that that was indispensable on this, that to just know that, that to be able to tell somebody that 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 420 code it more than likely is going to come back. But whenever you see something like uh, the codes we had, it was the heated oxygen sensor and a 420. So we had a PO 36 and we had a PO 420. So sometimes that would be the same thing. But this was just the heater circuit. So we, we were just checking the sensor to make sure it was working the way an O2 sensor should. But this isn't going to help the 420. If it was a O2 sensor, stuck lean, stuck rich, something like that, circuit fault, then that might have cleared both codes. Right now, I mean, you could see on the, the video that the O2 sensor does respond better, but it, it's very closely following the upstream. So that cat code's probably going to come back. Now the EVAP, that's where part of this is what I want to explain. That's one scan tool. That's another scan tool. This is the Autel. This thing has found so many problems. I mean, I've had it for, I, I'm going to guess about three years now. I know it's over a year out of updates already, but it has found so many problems without ever having to get out the scope. This one, they, this is a Harbor Freight. This is a ZR13. They do make an updated model. This is fast. This is, if you want to see what the codes is are, yeah, what the codes is, but if you wanted to see what the codes are, and you wanted to see some live data, this will definitely be your fastest tool. If you're just looking for fuel trims, you know, you want to see codes and fuel trims, you'll never beat the speed. And these Harbor Freight ones are good. They, I mean, they, this thing has never let me down either. Now, on them, that particular car with these particular codes, the Modus, I don't have a battery for. Oh, I have a battery, but I have to plug it in. The battery's no good. I still haven't gotten a new one for that. This, on them codes, is overkill. I mean, on, on those codes. I mean, this would be too much. This is more than enough, because what I was able to do is watch both O2 sensors on it. It's only scan data. We're not getting into... You know, the scope, we're not watching the O2s on the scope. But what we're doing is we're watching how they could respond on scan data. And, that, and that's just as, okay, there's the cleared. But we want to get back to the codes that were on it here. This one, the PO455. Now, that's a large leak for the EVAP. So if I was using this sense, this scanner, that would have done me no good at all. This one and that one both have bi-directional controls. What I did on it, it had through the software of the Hyundai, it had an EVAP test. And you could see on the video, I ran the test on it and it, it quickly, you know, told me there was no EVAP problem. This might have been caused by something else, somebody else taking something off. Um, it should have caused the light, but we don't know which one was actually throwing the light. The speed sensor is kind of odd coming up in the engine, but it's uh, it also uses the speed sensor for it, it was under the uh, electronic steering control. Oh, but my battery isn't going here. Okay. The motor-driven power steering... It needs a speed signal also. The ABS needs a speed signal. So the engine light was illuminated for a speed signal. So that was easy enough to check. Replace that. But this one, you wouldn't have been able to do with the little scanner. The big scanner would have definitely did it. But this is just so convenient to hang over the wheel. And like I said, whenever I did get this, this is the MP808. It's, this was the cheapest bi-directional scanner that was decent i keep calling it the cheapest bi-directional scanner i could get there there was plenty other ones but this was the best decent name brand one and it, it's it's never let me down 
Uh, so when, whenever I say on a video that, you know, it's the cheapest, it's the cheapest of the name brand or better. At, at the time, the launches, the thing that they weren't really as popular and Autel's always been a good name. I mean, a lot of people stick with that whole platform. They go to the Autel scopes. I mean, they build some good stuff. But whenever I call this the cheap scanner, I mean, it was the cheapest that would let me do this evap leakage anything else if it doesn't have bi-directional controls it's not you know I, I wouldn't consider it you're better off saving up for one of these than just getting one of these but these will help you it depends which one you way you want to go with your diagnosis if you want to go with this in the scope you're going to be able to find some tests but you're still not going to be able to do things like that like you're you're not going to be able to find an evap test you're not going to be able to do uh throttle body resets or relearns it's there's a lot that this does even though it's not modern that this this is older than this and it still does a lot but there's a time for every one if these weren't quick and easy to diagnose then you can't beat the snap on for actual guided functions because it'll actually tell you which sensor to probe, where to probe it, what each wire is, and it'll set up the oscilloscope for you to do a test on the sensor. So if it's something that this couldn't do with the scan data, then yes, you definitely want to break that up, but that's rare. I went a lot of years with just this or one, you know, ones like it. And but I started with ones like that because that was what was popular. And as these got bigger, I haven't gotten a fancy one yet. This was the fanciest bi-directional I had. And you know, I did a lot, but it's a good scanner. Yeah, that's all I could say about that. But what, what also what I wanted to show you is I used the load pro to put a load. You you always want to check your powers and grounds. You want to check them with a load on them what this does is whenever you hit the button it puts a load on the power in the ground and you don't have to switch your leads it'll tell you which side is it on the power side or is it on the ground side and then you go from there this is like a homemade test light and yes with a soldering gun you can make vice grips like erico i mean these things hang on there pretty good i mean you just got to get it hot enough before you solder it but what I did is I just left the wire so I could hook this up to light. I could hook it up to anything I need, a good ground to go to scope, anything like that. And then you just use just the regular bulb and you put each filament to a light. And what I use is the stackable ones because one of these I, I've written on them is 0.5 ohms and one of them is 2 ohms. 2 amps, sorry. Ohms, not amps, not ohms. This would be a 0.5 amp draw. This is a 2 amp draw. You could put the 0.51 on circuits that, you know, you don't want to overload that much, a low low amperage circuit. And then you could put this on. And if you use the stackable leads, you could stack them and have a 2.5 draw. But the cables for these, I mean, these are quite simply one of these cords that goes to a computer. It's not the best silicone wire inside, but it, it's good wire. You ohm it out, it, it's, you know, zero ohms going through a voltmeter. And I just keep these in that little kit with that. So I could use this on that, the power in the ground. You know, you have a little bit more moving around. This, once you got it on, you're checking the power in the ground with, with a, you know, decent pull. But so you know you got enough. If if you seen anything that was out of the ordinary with this, you might want to see how much. And it's gonna but it's gonna get you there to where you're gonna decide if you need another tool or not. But basically, the camera at the end takes the mystery out of is it the catalytic converter? Is is it okay? Is the 420 gonna go away? Is it caused by an O2 sensor? The easiest thing to do is once you got that oxygen sensor out of there, stick a camera up, take a look at the honeycomb. If it looks like that, you can tell whoever's car it is that, yes, this light's probably going to come on, your engine light's going to come on, and it's probably going to be for this cat efficiency. 
give them a little bit warning about they're going to need new cat. So that way, you know, you stay on top of things. But it's it. They're good tools and they're pretty cheap on Amazon. I mean, there's different ones. I've I've had quite a few of them. That one's really nice. That's the first I believe they called articulating that I could turn the knob and actually look up at the valves. Comes in, you know, super handy and it takes excellent images. But all right, guys, I'm gonna I'm gonna include the video footage off that of the catalytic converter. That's why I was up here and I just figured, you know, they're they're. There is a couple more words I need to say about this before I, people out there thinking this isn't a good scanner or it's junk or something. But this, is, it's, this is a very good scanner, you know, and the bi-directional functions, it, it depends on the car. It'll let you do a lot of what the bigger ones will do, but it doesn't do the module-to-module -module communications. You have to go into each module. So if you're working on CAN bus, something like that, you know, get out the scope in the breakout box or, you know, get a better scanner. All right, guys. Hope you enjoyed it. As always, thanks for watching. Have a great one. Adios.